back, everybody. Josh Taylor here with you. Paul Zeiss joining me in studio. 412-575-2600 is the number. Give us your phone calls. Also, send us your tweets at Josh Taylor HD. We got one coming in here. Jason checks in first and says, uh, Garrett Cole's diva act is tiresome, he says, Paul, even if he was pitching up to expectations. What did you make of all that? Because there had been... There had been that moment in the dugout during the course of this game, and after, I believe it was in the fifth inning, or was it maybe in the fourth inning, uh, there was a play, a ground ball to first base. Both Cole and uh, Josh Bell converge on it. Neither really goes to cover the bag. There's a mix-up. The runner gets on. Cole visibly angry, and Greg Brown even mentioned it during the TV broadcast. Oh, there's the old Garrett Cole again. So we started to see him maybe get a little bit too riled up and start to come unglued. But what, how have you felt about that? Because we did see him turning a corner, maybe controlling his emotions, but that looked like it, it clearly came unraveled tonight. You know, Josh, at the beginning of the year, the reason I said that Jamison Tyon would be their best pitcher by the end of this year is because you don't see that from Jamison Tyon. I felt that way a year ago. Yeah, and I, I think that, and that's not to say that Garrett Cole isn't a very good, I, I mean, a lot of people in this town are down on Garrett Cole. I think he's a really good pitcher. He's a good pitcher. I think the, one, the one thing that he's not been able to do is harness his emotions when things go south. I'll, I'll say this much about and, Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole's biggest enemy is himself. Yeah. He's the one thing standing in his way of meeting that potential that he has. And, it, and it's nothing against his talent. It's just his ability to actually focus on what his job is at hand and actually stay yeah, in the kill. That's the one thing Tyone has that I think Cole lacks. Tyone gives up a hit on a batter. He refocuses and gets the next guy. Even if he strikes out one guy, he still stays focused and gets the next guy. Tyon has a very short memory, and he just keeps going. He just wipes the slate clean from batter to batter. That's exactly right. And that's what, you know what, that's what those really top, top pitchers, that, I mean, I kind of think the difference between Garrett Cole and some of the best pitchers in the National League, like the, you know, the Clayton Kershaws of the world, yeah. you know, he gets into a little bit of a jam. Sometimes he just cannot figure, you know, find his way out. He's, you know, he starts... You know, fussing at the umpire because of the right. strikes and calls, and you know, and the glares you know, afterwards. Now, now they're you know maybe a, a little ball gets hit in between two guys, and this and that. And now he like snaps his glove and turns. That's when you know he's in trouble. And you know what? Maybe tonight it almost started from the the so at the second pitch that the that Span hit uh, over the fence. There you go. Um, but if Garrett Cole really wants to take that next step as a pitcher. He's got to cut that out. He's got to figure out how to cut that out. When things are going south, find a way to, you know, dial back, find 99-mile-an-hour heater and strike someone out and get out of the inning instead of, you know, the nonsense that he, sometimes he, he does. I think there's a difference between an intense pitcher and a pitcher that can't harness his emotions. There is a difference because pitchers that can be intense can still harness their emotions. The one thing we remember, if you want to use Roger Clemens for an example, Roger Clemens was an intense guy. But for the most part, right. he was able to harness his emotions. He was able to channel them. Yeah. That might be the one thing, and in my opinion, standing in the way of Garrett Cole. Got to go to the phone lines, 412-575-2600. Bob in Indiana. Bob, you're on the nightly sports call. Thanks for taking my call, Josh. Thanks for calling in. Paul. Hey, uh, calling about Garrett Cole, uh, right. just like you've been saying about him. He's like a Jekyll and Hyde. You know, he either has a great game or an awful game. There's no in-betweens. And he doesn't seem like no ace of the the. The Pirates. He's like to me. No is first, Tyon second, and he's third. I just don't see him as an ace. And the other thing that irritates me is the bunting. And it's not just with Cole, but in the pitchers in general for the Pirates, they do not know how to bunt. It used to be a day years ago when that's all a pitcher could come in. He could lay a bunt down perfect, no matter who you called. And now these these guys up there swinging, they don't even what they're doing. They just look lost. And I just don't understand what's so hard for them to lay a bunt down when called upon. That's that's a good point. I appreciate the call, and and that is it's it is frustrating, isn't it? Yeah. When you when you see other teams' pitchers come in and successfully lay down sacrifice bunts, and it seems like more often than not, that's something the Pirates struggle with a little bit too much for everybody's comfort. Yeah, and part of it is, I, you know, I think Clint Hurdle's philosophy and Neil Huntington's philosophy is they don't like to bunt. They feel like you know bunting, you're giving away innings. So maybe they just don't get enough practice at it because there's only you know certain times when you see they'll actually have them drop down a bunt. I think they should do it more than they do, uh, but it's just not their overall organizational philosophy. It's uh, play for big innings. I'm, I'm curious about it myself as far as just how much work they put into it and why it seems to be such a big problem. Let's go back to the phone lines. Let's go to John in Johnstown. John, you're on the nightly sports call. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Thanks for calling in. Hey, uh, I want to uh, talk about uh, Garrett Cole. And um, on any other team, um, I don't think he's an ace. Uh, he's got such a hard head. Uh, you know, if you have the stuff like you were talking about Clemens, you can back it up. This guy, you look at his last 10 games. 
they can't back it up. And then when you have an attitude like that, and, you know, he doesn't want to be in Pittsburgh, and I think that's been, you know, talked about. He just wants to keep his money and leave. What do you guys think about that? Well, first off, thanks for the call. Um, taking this kind of one step at a time, because you've done a lot of different points here. And the, the term ace has come up twice now yeah. in this show. I've always been of the belief that there's some people that think the word ace is an overused term. I believe that it's a legitimate term, but I also believe that you have to earn that right, right to be called an ace. You can be the best pitcher on the staff and not be an ace. May I remind you all, there was a time when Ron Valone was the best starter on the Pirates staff. That didn't mean Ron Valone was an ace. You got to earn the term. You got to put together the resume. Now, guys like Bumgarner, Kershaw, Sabathia, uh, they, they've earned the right. Maybe even Corey Kluber, you can make the case for Corey Kluber, have earned the, ter- earned the term of an ace. I don't think Garrett Cole was I think he had the potential for it. way to it. He was well he on was. his way to it until about middle of last year. You know, when early. he got hurt, when he injured it, his own. Yeah, and a- after that, it just became, you know, um, very spotty. And, you know, we've seen this year glimpses Oof. where he's been really good. Yes. And you his say, last three starts before tonight. And you were say, really okay, this is what we're talking about. But, Absolutely. but he's had too many nights like this this year where you just kind of feel like um, there's something weird going on or strange going on or whatever. And um, I think that, again, Jamison Tylen has the mentality and the stuff to be an ace. I would totally agree with that. And once again, the only thing standing in Garrett Cole's way from being that besides putting together the resume I would be, I would say it's channeling his own emotions and he's standing in his own way of being able to progress that way. Uh, let's go back to uh, the phone lines, Jordan in North Hills. Jordan, you're on the nightly sports call. Hey, Paul, love your stuff. Thank you. Uh, first of all, McCutcheon's doing the Pirates a favor by playing so good. They need to trade him, get some young arms in here. They have no shot to win this division this year. We know it. You know it. There's no shot. The Cardinals are just as good as the Pirates, they have no shot, and so get rid of McCutcheon now, and G loves Q. That was, that was cute there on the back end. Very nice. Um, as far as the McCutcheon trade talk, and he is right about one thing. If you were to talk about teams that are very identical, the Cardinals and the Pirates are kind of identical in the fact that they are both consistently inconsistent, and they have both lost the teams. They had no business losing to it. Yeah, and I'll tell you what. The thing about it is I actually think if you look at player for player right now, the way everybody's playing, Mm -hmm. I think the Pirates are better than the Cardinals. I would agree with that. Um, I I, I mean, Carlos Martinez is the only starter they have that you feel good about. Exactly. Lynn isn't very good. No, he's been terrible. Waka, they moved back. Wainwright looks, what is he, 51 years old or whatever he is? I think after you know his last saying? injury, Wainwright just I mean, he's just, bad. yeah, I mean, you, you, their bullpen is atrocious. I mean, at least the Pirates have Rivero down there. Right. They don't, even have, they don't even have that guy down there. I mean, Rosenthal, O, you I mean, know, I'm trying to think who, the, there's another I mean, guy, Segrist. Do they still have Segrist? hasn't been himself. I mean, you know, you look at that, that bullpen, it's, a, it's bad. They don't have speed. They don't have power. They're not great defensively. You know, this is a team that the Pirates should be able to catch, but you know what? They're winning, what, 8-1 to one or something tonight. Yeah, they're beating the They're going to be a, a game and a half or two games ahead of the Pirates. It's like, you want to, here, here's the thing. Do you want to tell, we talk about the Pirates showing how bad this division is. The fact that after tonight, if the Brewers lose, the Cardinals will be, what, at two and a half or two, two half, games or I something think, yeah. out? is absolutely far more telling to me than the Pirates being four out or whatever and, they are. And beating the Nationals. Which, by the way, I think uh, the Brewers have taken the lead, but that's a different story. All right, we got to take a break. we come <laughs> back, we'll wrap up when we come back here at the Nightly Sports Call. Stay with us.